Y'all good this morning? There's no way that I can match up to everything that we've been through already this morning. All the singing, all the joy, everything that's going on. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you and I'm going to let y'all realize how old I am. A lot of y'all are probably wondering what this is right here. And, and if, if I was to, to ask you to guess, y'all would guess a lot of different things. But I'm going to tell you what I remember. I remember whenever I was probably five, six years old, I was a little old bitty fella, and I would go to, uh, I'd go to my great-grandmother's house. Whenever I'd go to my great-grandmother's house, I would, I would walk in there, and, and I would look, and there would be a sheet on her table. And on that table, there was, uh, you'd walk in there, and it, you'd just see stuff up there, and I'd always want to go. Does any of y'all want to really peek under here? You do, don't you? I would, re- I would look, and I'd peek under there to see what was under that table cloth because I knew it was something that I could have. And see, the one thing that I want y'all to realize is, is, is what they would do is they would get up early in the morning and they would, they would fix their breakfast. And what they would do is in the morning they would fix their breakfast and, and back then they would get through with all their breakfast and everything and, and they was going out into the farm and going to work and what they would do is they would, do y'all remember this? A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all do, a lot of y'all are at my age. Uh, and they would go and, they, and what they would do is they would, instead of taking everything and putting it all up, they would set everything in the table. And whenever they would get done, they'd cover it up. And then they would come in for lunch. And whenever they'd come in for lunch, they would come up and they would they'd pull all of that stuff. And they would take that off the table. And they would set it over to the side. And they would keep it everything ready and they would have everything ready for them. They'd have all their ingredients laid out. They'd have everything. If, if they wanted coffee back then, they would, they would have to get that grinder out and they would have to grind their coffee. Am I bringing you home, some of you? And after they got done with that, they would go and they would, they would take that old coffee pot and they would, they would get that coffee and this right here was actually Carrie's granddaddy's coffee cup. And they would take that coffee pot and they would, they would fill it up. And what they would do back in that day, they would, they would walk around. And all of y'all may remember this. They would walk around with that saucer. You remember that, don't you? And they would have that saucer because what they would do is they would make sure that they filled that coffee up to where it would run over. And that's where in the Bible it says my cup runneth over. It makes me think that a lot of times in my life that the Lord, He just, He blesses me to the point that that my cup really runneth over. See, I I look at a lot of these things and a lot of these things are are old utensils that you would look at. I I don't know how old this is. I would say that it's probably possibly a hundred years old. And and that that grandmother and great-grandmother of mine, she would... She would roll that out and she'd make those biscuits and she'd have it ready for us. There's always fruit out on the table that you could go. And I remember, I remember smelling that fruit and thinking, man, y'all can smell that whenever it's over with. And I would see all these things and I remember them pulling out all their, their recipes. And, and I want y'all to, to think about this. This is, a, this is chocolate pie. As you can see, I, I love chocolate pie growing up because that was my favorite. This right here would make two pies, five eggs, listen to this, two pieces of flour, one tablespoon of cocoa, two cups of sugar, and four cups of milk. And I remember reading these whenever I was young, and I'd think, what's a heaping? But they knew exactly what a heaping was back at that time. All these things were things that, that was important to us as we was growing up, but I'm going to share something with you. In biblical times, the table was very important. And I realized that, that what we would do whenever we would think about it today, let me tell you what we do at the table. Today we socialize around the table. Hey, would y'all like to go out and eat? And we would sit around the table and we would socialize and we would, we would laugh and, oh, you'd see people, oh, everything's going just great while they were sitting around the table. But then they'd go back to their house and they had still troubles at their house. But while they were sitting around the table, they'd forget all about their problems, all about their trials. Do we do that today? We do, don't we? 
See, I'm going to tell you what happened. Whenever the family started really deteriorating is whenever the family stopped ever sitting around the tables. Whenever we was growing up, we didn't have an option about if you ate, you came to the table. And we ate. And it was something that we had fellowship with each other. We'd talk, we'd laugh, we'd share. We'd find out how everybody's days went. A lot of you kids, y'all may not have ever been able to sit at your table like it we did whenever we was growing up. You know, the disciples at one time, they were sitting around a table and they was talking to Jesus. And the one thing that these disciples, they wanted to know something. And the thing I, I loved about the disciples is how, how real these disciples was and how much these disciples are, was really like us. I don't know about y'all, but I, I wonder what heaven's going to be like. I wonder what that, we just sang about that mansion. I wonder what that mansion is going to be like. I wonder all these things that the Bible talks about. And I wonder what it's all going to be like and what we're going to end up having. I, y'all, I'm going to tell you something. I'm a selfish human being. There's one thing that I want. I want whenever I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus face to face and I want to sit across the table with him. I want to talk to him. I want to ask him about all this stuff that I'm reading in this Bible that he was talking about. Don't you? But I believe that whenever I get to heaven, I will never think about all these questions that I've got because I believe that whenever I get there and I, I see that mansion, I see those streets of gold, I see those angels flying around the throne of heaven, whenever I see people really, truly worshiping God and it being just like this, side by side, to where whenever we raise up our hands and praise the Lord, we're rubbing up against somebody. Because it's so full. But the Bible says there's only going to be a few that comes to the kingdom of heaven. See, I ask you, are you going to be one of the few? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be one of the few. So whenever I sit there and I think about this scripture right here in Mark chapter 9, these disciples, they was real people. And I'm going to tell you what they were doing. They were sitting there and they was debating about this. I tell you what, I'm going to be better than you in the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. They may have been walking, doing, and acting any old way. I believe that Judas himself even was telling those people, I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Oh, Peter said, I tell you what, God, uh, Jesus, I'll never deny you because I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that's what their goal was. But I'm going to tell you, they all split whenever the problems came. You look around. Right now, people are splitting from the faith. I got to speak to a person week before last that said that they worship the devil. I was thinking, dude, how is that doing for you? You know what? They came to talk to the preacher. See, let me share something with you. There's people that's in this world that they don't need the Lord Jesus Christ until everything crumbles apart around their feet. And then they start coming to all the Christian people saying, pray for me. But wait a minute, you just got through saying that you didn't believe in God. You just got through saying that you, listen, I'm going to tell you, Jesus is real. And Jesus' spirit's real. And Jesus puts, a, puts something on your heart that makes you realize you need him every day of your life. But these disciples are sitting around a table in Mark 9. Listen to what it says in verse 33. It says he came to Capernaum and, and he was in this house. He was eating at the table. And he said, what is this that you had discussed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace because they was ashamed of it. They held their peace by the way and they disputed among themselves that who should be the greatest. And he sat down and he called the twelve and he said to them, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all the servants of all. And he took these children. See, I'm going I'm to share something with you that I want you to think. It's important. Let me borrow that child. Come here. There you go. Come here. If you look at this child right here, if I turn this little fella loose, you know what he's going to do? He's going to ignore every one of you. He's going to walk. He's going to do. He's going to go. He's going to do anything he can 
to get away from us to go and do what he wants to do. Am I right, Mom? Am I right? He's going to go and do everything in his power to do exactly what he wants to do. He's going to lick on his lips. He's going to smile. He's going to do everything. And he's going to turn around every once in a while to look and see, are you looking as I'm doing wrong? And, but he's going to keep on doing it. And Jesus looked at a child like this and he put him on his lap and he told those disciples, unless you come to me as this child, let me tell you why some of you will not be saved. Some of you will not ever be saved because you don't know how to humble yourself as this child. If I took this child right now and I turned him over and I whipped him right here, you know what he'd do? He'd cry. You know why he'd cry? Because he knows that he'd done wrong and it hurts. But I'm going to tell you what ends up happening with us as we become adults. We become adults and we start ignoring the Spirit of God. We start ignoring whenever the Lord starts correcting us. And whenever the Lord starts correcting us and whipping us, you know what we tend to do? We tend to ignore it and we keep going down the path that we were still going on. Am I not right? And we ignore the leadership of the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you something. This little fellow right here, he knows right and wrong. He knows what he needs. He knows if that tastes good or that doesn't taste good. Because I'm going to tell you, he only eats what he wants to eat. Right? So I'm going to tell you something that I want you all to realize. In order for you to be saved, you must become as a child. And you must ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you. Because I'm going to tell you something. What we tend to do as adults, we tend to think, I've got it all figured out. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to do anything. But if you don't come as that child, the Bible says you'll not enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus told them this. Jesus made it clear. And I want to share something with you. He was on the road to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24. And I'm going to read this scripture. Jesus had been walking on the road to Emmaus in chapter 24 of Luke. And listen to what the Bible says in verse 30. He said, It came to pass that he was sitting at the table with them, that he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it with these two men that he was walking on on the road to Emmaus. And the Bible says, And all of a sudden that their eyes was open, and they knew him. And then he vanished out of, his, out of their sight. See, I'm going to tell you what Jesus did whenever he got around the table. Everybody knew that Jesus was about let's bless what we're doing here and let's make sure that we eat in the right way. See, as I read this scripture, it says when there, and it says, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn with us, within us while he talked with us on the way and while he opened the scripture? I think about this because a lot of times we realize that, that we don't open the scripture enough. We realize that whenever we're sitting around the table now, you know what we do? We play board games. When we're sitting around the, the table, we, we play games and we'll roll our dice and we'll move three or four spaces and we, we do all this and we laugh and, and we have a good time. But do we really get around the table and we really worship the Lord like we used to do whenever we were kids? And I, I think about this because the one thing that I realized that as Jesus was opening up that scripture, all of a sudden it came to life who he was. But they'd been walking with him for days. And I listened to this because I want to tell you what we do today. Today what we do when we get around the, the table, we start trying to solve our problems, don't we? If our kids have problems, I'm going to tell you what we do. We try to get their attention, so we'll set them around the table. We'll talk to them. We get to the point that we think, you know, we can handle anything. Oh, kids, y'all get in there to that table and do your homework. Do your homework. You know why? Because that's a place that you go and you sit around and something truly needs to be done at that table. Whenever Jesus opened up that scripture and everything come to life, and I got this one scripture that I want to read you because this scripture blesses my heart. In Luke chapter 7, and I want y'all to look in verse 36. Jesus changed people's lives forever while he was at the table. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke 7, 36. It said, one of the Pharisees desired or wanted him to come and that he would eat with him. 
And whenever he went into the Pharisee's house, he sat down to eat. And there was a woman in that city, which was a sinner. And when she knew that Jesus was, was at that Pharisee's house, listen to what she did. She brought this alabaster box of ointment. This alabaster box of ointment right there, it, it was over a year's wages. She had done everything she could, and she was going down the wrong path. She was a harlot. She was, and all of a sudden she realized, I, I just want to touch this Jesus that they're talking about. But she went further. And she stood behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with her tears and then wipe them from the hair of her head. She kissed his feet. She anointed them with ointment. And every one of these Pharisees that was sitting at that table, they missed it. They missed what this woman had done. They missed that this woman wanted to be changed. They missed that this woman wanted to have forgiveness. They missed everything that this woman did at this time. Because listen to what they said. The Pharisees which invited him, they saw it. And they spake within themselves. This man, if he was a prophet, would have known what matter of woman this was that touched him. Because she's a sinner. God, let me share something with you about Jesus. Jesus knows what you are. Jesus knows what you've been. Jesus knows where you've gone. Jesus knows everything there is about us and he still wants to touch us. He still got to the point in his life that, listen, that at point in your life that Jesus wants to touch you no matter where you're at. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I got something I want to say to you. And he said, go on and say it, Master. He said, there's two creditors. He said, there's two debtors. One owed 500 pence and the other 50. And whenever they had nothing to pay, he forgave both of them. He said, which one loved him the most? Brother Steve, why are you reading this? I, I want to read this because I want to tell you something. No matter where you are or what you've done in your life, when Jesus touched your life, he will change you forever. The Bible says the one that he forgive the most is the one that loves him the most. I'm going to tell you why I love Jesus. Y'all know that song, Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. The reason I loved him and love him today is because he has forgiven me for a lot of things. Amen. He's changed my life. He's made me happy. He's given me joy. He's given me a family. He's given me a church family that I love and they love me. I'm going to tell you what God has done. God has changed me from the inside out. And I'm going to tell you, He does not care what I used to be. All He wants to do is make me what He wants me to be. I got one last scripture that I want to read to you too. Jesus said in Luke 22:30, He said, Man, we've got to be faithful. This is exciting whenever I look at this. He said, Ye that eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. One of these days we're going to have a reward. And I'm going to tell you about this last table. In Luke chapter 14, here's the last table that I want to read to you. The Bible says that one of them, Luke chapter 14 verse 15, and when one of them that sat at meat at the table with him, they heard all these things. They said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. And he said unto him, He said, A certain man had a great supper, and he, and he invited many people. And the servants came at supper time and said to them, He said, Everybody was bidden come because everything is ready. Y'all, let me share something with y'all. Heaven's ready right now. Heaven's ready for every single one of you. Your place is prepared. Jesus has done everything that he's got to do. Everything's ready. But I'm going to tell you what these people did. Y'all ready to hear it? One said, oh Lord, he said, I can't come to you to your invitation because I bought some ground and I got to go look at that ground. The other one said, Lord, you know something? I bought a bunch of oxen and a... And Lord, I can't come because i got to try those oxen out. And other said, oh Lord, my wife, I married a wife. And you know something, Lord, I ain't got time to come. And verse 21 says, so the servant came and, and said to the Lord, the master of the house, and he was so angry at these servants. He said, I want you to go out quick. 
He said, I want you to go to the streets and to the lanes and the city. And he said, I want you to bring here to the poor and the maimed, the crippled and the, and the lame and all that's blind. And the servant said unto the Lord, said, Lord, it's done. But yet there's still room. There's a lot of people that think that there's not enough room for them in the kingdom of heaven. There's a lot of people that think that they've been sorry all their life and that they can't go to heaven. Have you ever thought about how silly that truly is? And they start following other things. The Lord said in him, he said, Go to the highways and the hedges and compel them that they would come into my house and be filled. For I say unto you that, that none of those men which was invited will taste that supper. Jesus said, Come unto me all your burden and heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. Sometimes the Lord makes me do something that I don't want to do as a pastor. A lot of times. But I realize that, that whenever the Lord has me to do it, I'm going to do it. There's a lot of you out there that the Lord's had you to do something. The Lord may have you to, to tell, your, tell your spouse, you know something, I'm sorry for what I said or what I did to you. And we swell up our chest and act like it, we're okay and we, we never tell them. We never tell them we're sorry. Lord may have you go back, to the, go back to that person at your work that you offended and, and go back to them and say, you know something, I'm sorry that I, that I hurt your feelings. You may go back one of these days and you go to that pastor that you said, you know that pastor right there, he just couldn't even preach a message this morning. But you don't know what that pastor's been going through. You don't know what that pastor has dealt with all that week in order to present that one message. The Lord gave me this message about us coming to the table with Him. Revelation 3.20 said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, if anybody will answer that door, I will come in and I will dine with them. Jesus wants to be at that table with you. Brother Steve, what have you got in your hand here? I've got a song right here. I've heard this song a few times, but I came in here this morning, the name of that song's Come to the Table. I... I, I thought I knew it well, and I, and I didn't, but the Lord told me to sing it. But I'm going to tell you something. There's some of you that the Lord will tell you to, to share your faith with your co-worker. You say, oh, Lord, I'm not going to do it. Lord, I'm not ready to do that. Some of you, the Lord will tell you whenever you get to school. Whenever you get to school, I want you to tell your classmate that you're a Christian. Oh, Lord, I'm not going to do it. But there's some of us that the Lord will have us to do something and you'll go to somebody. I went to Landon this morning. I said, Landon, would you, read this, would you sing this song to me because the Lord told me to sing it? Some of you are sitting in here with talents that you'll never use because you're afraid, because the devil tells you that you're not good enough. Some of you are sitting in here, you have musical talents to play. Some of you can sing. Some of you, where's JD, can play a saxophone but you hadn't done it in church yet. Huh? I'll throw a man under a bus, won't I? Some of you have talents that God wants you to do, but yet you'll never do them because you're afraid of what people may say about you. So I'm gonna sing this song to you. And I want you to ask yourself, are you ready to come to the table of God? Come to the table of mercy Prepared with the wine and the bread All who are hungry and thirsty Come and your soul will be fed Come at the Lord's invitation Receive from his nail-scarred hands. Eat of the bread of salvation. Drink of the blood of the Lamb. I would so much rather have people on this earth laugh at me for doing something that I know God wants me to do. 
I would so much rather y'all look and say, boy, that brother Steve, I know he was faithful, but that was terrible. I would rather every single individual here or anybody that's going to watch this look and say, that man right there, he ain't got a clue what he's doing as long as God says, well done. Every single one of you, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to be eating at that table with him. You need to invite him into your home. You need to ask him to come on in, Lord. I want you to be my guest in my home. And you bring him into your home. You bring him into your life. You bring him into your heart. You get that fear away. You say, God, here I am. I'm going to taste of you, God. The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. And tell your friends about him. Tell your enemies about him. Brother Steve, I'm not ready. Well, then you better come to this altar this morning and get yourself ready because I'm telling you, God wants to pour out a revival on this church. God wants to touch your friends and your family. He wants to touch your life and he wants to use you. But you're gonna have to allow him to use you. You're gonna have to ask yourself, Lord, what can I do for the cause of Christ? He'll change your life forever if you allow him. The table's open. The table's open for every single one of you to come and receive him. God, I come to you, Lord. Lord, thank you that we come to that table of mercy. Thank you, God, that your grace is sufficient for all of us. God, thank you that your spirit will overpower us if we'll allow you. But God, it is so sad that we can turn on you and not love you the way we're supposed to. God, use this church. Use these people. Grow them, God. Lord, I pray for the ones who are not able to be here or for the ones who are indifferent and just have went in the wrong path. God, touch their heart and put them back at that table with you, Lord. That's my prayer. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.